70,000 British women have embraced Islam in the last 10 years. 70,000 British women have embraced Islam in the last 10 years. I think it's, um, it's a, a massive sign, it's proof of the hypocrisy of democracy really. Because uh, if you propose to be a democratic country, I don't believe in democracy, I don't call for democracy, I don't believe in freedom. But the, the, the people who are, are proposing to ban the niqab do, they are democratically elected government, do believe in freedom and democracy. They go to other lands like Iraq and Afghanistan in the name of freedom and democracy and bomb freedom and democracy in those lands when they invade it. So according to them, how can it now be so hypocritical to say to women on the one hand you're free, after 200 years of the women's movement, you earn freedom to, you know, vote in the 19, uh, you know, the late 20th, early 20th century. You've now got, you know, the Equal Pay Act from 1970. You've got this, you've got that. But suddenly, when it comes to Muslim women, hold on, your freedom stops. You are not allowed to wear what you want. Every other woman can wear what she likes, but the Muslim woman, only the Muslim woman, you are not free. So that is just hypocrisy of democracy. If you believe in freedom, then surely you should allow women to dress the way they want. Um, uh, as I said, I don't believe in democracy because we believe uh, that Islam is superior. We believe that we don't submit to uh, any human being, as, as um, whom I was saying, we believe that we submit to the Creator. And that's the beauty of Islam. And that is why I think 70,000 British women have embraced Islam in the last 10 years, is because Islam gives them that emancipation. It gives them true li uh, you know, freedom. And uh, you know, it, it frees them from the shackles of the slavery of man-made law. Because we dress uh, not according to the fashion uh, dictates or what the columns are saying. We don't dress to impress the opposite gender or the same gender in the society. We only dress to please Allah, our Creator. And that is true freedom, that is true emancipation. When you are not subservient to any man, woman, president, any uh, industry, you're, you know, we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to allow society to exploit our, um, you know, desires and our instincts, you know. Why is it that the cosmetic industry in Europe is worth a couple of billion euros? It's mainly women buying this stuff, you see, because they're exploiting that desire of women to dress themselves up, to be attractive. And that is not to say that Muslim women uh, don't like to dress up or anything, but we have rules for public dress, you know, we'd be, and these rules and these uh, laws have been laid down in the Quran, that the woman, when she leaves the house, when she goes outside, there's a specific public dress. When she's in her private place, in front of her husband, her brother, her father, she's free to dress differently, you see. Similarly, man, he has a certain public dress code. When he's at home, he may be dressed differently. Um, th th this is Islam, you know, we, we submit to uh, our Creator who knows best about our roles. And Allah has defined a certain role for women, a certain role for men. Some of the things we share, the same roles as men do in some spheres of life and society. Um, for example, political participation in Islam. You know, the, the women got the vote, right to vote in 1980. We were given that 1,400 years ago, the right to um, politically participate in, uh, in Islam. Uh, you know, one, one of the fundamental, uh, if you like, tenets of Islam, our, our, our whole belief is based on the fact that we believe that Allah is the legislator. So when it comes to, you know, um, establishing Islam on a political level, that's something that every Muslim is obliged to work and strive for. Thank you.